Hello again, and welcome back to another MCAT question of the day here at MCAT Self Prep, home of the free e-course for MCAT. My name is Theo Bennett, and I'm one of the tutors here, and I'm going to be walking you through this practice problem that's found on our free e-course as though you were one of my private tutoring students. This e-course is great, and I personally used it to get a perfect 528 when I took the MCAT for myself. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this question. Uh, but before we do, this comes from the chemistry section of the MCAT. Why don't you go ahead and press pause and try this question out for yourself? All right, now that you've tried it out, uh, let's go ahead and walk through the explanation. Okay, so before we kind of dive into the explanation, I want to give a little bit of historical context so we kind of understand what's happening here. So if you put on these glasses that are called diffusion graded glasses, they're the glasses that kind of make any point of light turn into a rainbow. I don't know if you've ever tried them, but scientists, when they put on these glasses and stared at uh, electricity pumped through certain gases like hydrogen gas, for example, they saw the, the normal color that was emitted, but they also saw these weird lines over here, like this red and this blue line. Uh, and they weren't really sure what that was. Then when they investigated a little bit further, they, they found two things. When they pumped electricity into these gases, they saw that there were these lines that were emitted. Uh, but then when they also passed light through these gases, they, the light absorbed certain wavelengths as well too. And upon a closer inspection, they saw, oh, look, the emission line corresponds perfectly to the absorption line. So gases and certain elements were absorbing and emitting light in these very discrete levels. And so they were wondering, why isn't this continuous? Why don't they just absorb all sorts of light, right? Why does it have to happen in these discrete little packets? Well, the reason why is going back to the Bohr model of the atom. For those of you who've already taken chemistry, you probably know that the Bohr model is not the correct model. <laughs> I feel like general chemistry is just a series of, of teachers telling you, uh, oh, sorry, we were lying to you about the model of the atom. And then they keep lying and keep introducing uh, even more complicated things. At any rate, we, we can kind of view this Bohr model of the atom with Jimmy Neutron kind of style, uh, where we've got a nucleus in the center, and then these concentric rings, um, almost like planetary orbits that surround this central nucleus. What this is representing is there are these discrete levels of energy that electrons can inhabit. And we name them, or rather we number them, so n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and they kind of just represent the different energy states that electrons can be in. But we can see that due to math essentially they can only exert or they can only exist in these different steps so they uh, an electron couldn't exist in this kind of in between state it would either have to stay at n equals 1 or go up to n equals 2 and so for uh, electrons to jump up in energy they have to absorb energy in the form of light and so they absorb energy to get bumped up to higher energy levels and then when they stop having this inputted energy, then they'll fall back to their natural state. So in the case of hydrogen, it would fall back to this from the three to the one. We talked about how when electrons receive energy, they go up, right? And so that um, when we go back to our emission spectrum, we can see that this was the, the energy that was being absorbed right here, right? And then when they fall back down, then they release the exact same amount of energy because it's the same discrete um, steps. And so if an atom were to absorb, energy here it would also emit energy as that electron is falling back down. Okay, so we can see that as we're going from high energy to low energy, we release energy in the form of light. And when we want to go from low energy to high energy, we have to absorb energy to make that transition. And that also happens through the absorption of light. Okay, let's go back to the question. Okay, so we said that when an electron is going back down to its ground state, right, that lowest energy state, we said that it emits energy in the form of light, right? So it's going to emit a photon and it's going to release energy. Um, and also we can see that the, the distance, right, is going to decrease, right? Because it gets closer back to that um, kind of like central area, the central nucleus. And so this one would also be incorrect. And so we're left with our, our correct answer, but I kind of want to explain why this is the correct answer, right? So energy can never be created or destroyed, right? And so um, in those higher energy levels, really what we were doing is we were at a very high potential energy state, right? Kind of think about like grabbing a, a weight and lifting it really high up. So as you drop that weight, right, that, that energy gets converted from potential energy to kinetic energy, right? And so you can kind of think about this in this case, like we're going from a high potential energy to a low potential energy. Um, and instead of converting to kinetic energy, we release that energy as light. 
Anyway, I hope you like this explanation. And um, if you do, feel free to subscribe. Also, you can head over to MCAT Self Prep and check out all the free stuff that we have available to help you on your MCAT journey. Um, and if you've been struggling with this concept and, and you found it helpful, feel free to share it with your friends as well, too. All right. Thanks again.